Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today, I'm gonna to be working on popping up my old Coleman Utah pop-up camper. So this video is intended to be for reference only. I just wanna show you guys how I set my camper up. So make sure that you follow all the recommendations, guidelines, and instructions that come with your pop-up camper. So now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting mine set up. The first thing I like to do is make sure that the camper is level side to side. So I've got this level with a magnetic edge on one side and I put it on the back bumper and check to see if it's level. And as you can see from the position of the bubble, my trailer is not level. So what's gonna to have to happen is that this side of the trailer is gonna to need to come up a bit so that I can get that bubble centered and everything leveled out. As you can see, my tow vehicle is not currently connected to the trailer. So I'm gonna get that set up so that I can move it. So since I'm only gonna be back in the trailer up a few feet, I really don't need to hook up all the safety chains, the wiring harness and the safety brake and all that sort of thing. I've just got the trailer hitched and gauged so I can push it back a few feet. The next thing that I wanna do is level the low side of the trailer by backing it up onto that yellow tri-leveler block. Now this next step is a little bit easier when my wife is around to help me, but I can do this myself too. It just takes a little bit of back and forth. So what I'll do is back the trailer up just a little bit so the wheel is up on the first level of the tri-leveler I'll hop out, check the level, and see where I'm at. And if it's still not level, then I'll back up to the next step and check it again. If it's still not level, I may need to go to the third step. So on the first level, you can see we're still not where we need to be, so I'm gonna keep going back. We're moving in the right direction, but it looks like we need to go a little bit further. Right about there looks pretty good. So these chalk blocks have ribs in them that are designed to interlock with these ribs that are on the tri-leveler. So once it's locked in place, it shouldn't slide back. Now that the wheels are chalked, I can drop the tongue jack and disconnect the tow vehicle. Now that the camper is leveled side to side, I need to level it front to back. As you can see, I've got my level on the tongue of the trailer and I'm just gonna lower the trailer jack until that bubble is centered. I think the level is looking pretty good now, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. So the next thing I'm gonna do is lower the stabilizers at each corner of my trailer. So I've got these plastic weight distribution pads on the ground below each of the stabilizers. So now I'll just lower the stabilizer until it makes firm contact with the pad. So the stabilizers on this trailer are not meant to take the full weight of the trailer. They're meant to just stabilize things. So I lower it to the point where it just barely starts to lift the trailer and then move to the next one. So this corner of the trailer ended up being a little bit higher off the ground than this stabilizer can reach to. So I've put a cinder block and the distribution pad under it to take up that extra space. So this back corner looked a little bit high, so I decided to put a block under this one too. Since the stabilizers may have changed the weight of the trailer a little bit, I'm gonna double check that the chalk blocks are firmly seated under the wheels. So I'm almost ready to pop the top. I just have to undo these latches first. So every camper is a little bit different, but on this Coleman Utah, I use this crank handle and put it in the receptacle on the very back of the trailer and crank it to get the top to raise up. Before I go any further, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. We just got home yesterday from a camping trip in New Hampshire and I realized that this lens cover must have popped off along the way somewhere. So I do know that's missing and I'm gonna replace it before I take this out on the road again. Anyway, let's get this thing popped up.
Before I start pulling out the slides, there's a couple things I want to do. The first thing I like to do is check and make sure that I've got all of my big stuff out of the trunk. Once the slides are out, I can access the trunk through the pass-through inside the cabin or on the side, but it's a little bit hard to get stuff that's either buried or big out of here. The other thing I like to do before pulling out the slide is to hook up the propane tank and turn it on. Now this can be done with the slide out, it's just a little bit harder because you got to kind of duck and crawl under. So if I remember to do it ahead of time, it's just a little bit easier. Now I can start pulling out the slides and all I really have to do is pull them straight out. Once the slide is fully out, I need to engage these two stabilizer bars. I'll first unclip it from this end, and then I slide the bar along this slider that's up here. Then I grab the free end of the bar and lock it over this pin that's on the trailer tongue. Once that's in place, I push up on the slide and push forward on the rod until this latch back here engages. Then I'll repeat the process on the other side. Now I can take care of the rear slide. So the support tubes on the rear slide work pretty much the same way as they do on the front. The only difference is, is that the free end of the tube engages with a pin on the rear bumper instead of the trailer tongue. So this Coleman Utah has a side slide as well, so now it's time to pull that out. So the first thing I need to do is undo these latches and turn them so they're horizontal. Now I can just grab these two handles and pull straight out. And that's pretty much it for the side slide. Before I head inside, what I want to do is grab the corner of the canvas on each of the slides and bring it so it's just over the top of the bed rail. I don't want to bring it all the way under just yet. I want to have it just up at the top so it's still a little bit loose and can kind of move. So now I can open up the door and we can head inside. The first thing I like to do inside the camper is swing up the galley. The next thing I like to do is get the door in place. And as you can see, it's stored up on the ceiling of this camper. At this end of the door, there's a locking pin that holds it into place. I just pull that out and swing it out. And then over on this end, there's two snap straps that I unfasten. And then I can pull it back off of the latch that it's on and then slowly swing it into place. As you can see, there's some cables and sliders at the top of the door that are attached to the ceiling that help keep the door from falling completely down if you lose control of it. So then I drop the door down into the channel in the floor where it seats, and then I swing the top into place and then actuate these latches to hold it in. Then I go back outside the camper and I grab the flap of the canvas that has the Velcro strip on it and lock it into place on the mating strip that's on the door frame. Back inside the camper, I grab the support rods that I store under the mattress. So this end of the support bar will clip into the crossbar that's just out of sight under the canvas here. So I'll lock that in right in the middle of the crossbar and then just sort of push and swing that crossbar up and into place. Then I take this end of the support bar that has the tab on it and lock it into this hook that's in the ceiling of the camper. So now I'll just repeat the process over here. To set up the canvas over here, I grab this support bar and I engage the end of the bar with this pin on it into a hole that's in the crossbar. And then just like the others, I slide this into place and lock this tab into the hook that's in the ceiling. And at this point, I like to tuck the canvas under the bed frame and attach these bungee cords to the hooks that are underneath.
To attach the canvas for the rear slide, I'm going to engage this Velcro strip that's on the side of the canvas to the one that's on the side of the slide, and then there's also a snap in the middle. So now I'm going to grab a couple of items that I've got stored under the table and these two cushions. So now I can just grab the table, I'll undo that Velcro strap, and then set up the legs. Now I'll flip up these seat backs and slide these cushions into place. Then I'll grab the seat back cushions and put those in place. And now to set up the side couch, I just grab this cushion out of the way. Then I'll slide this back as far as it'll go and then bring in the back cushion and put it here. To set up the electric on this camper, I just pop open this hatch and pull this cord straight out. So if I'm at a campsite that doesn't have this type of receptacle or I'm at home, I use this adapter, put this on the cord, and then plug this into a standard AC mains outlet. If I'm at a campsite that has water hookups, I grab my potable water hose and attach it to the camper here. And then of course the other end would go to the water supply. Directly below the potable water inlet is the drain tube. Now since I usually set the camper up either at home or at a campsite without full sewer hookups, I have this adapter hose and use this end to connect up to the drain. And then the other end of the hose just screws into my gray water tank. If I'm set up camping and want hot water, this is where I would light the pilot light on my water heater. Now I'm not gonna go into detail in this video on how to do that, I'll make a separate video about that at some point in the future. But the basic steps are that I would first make sure that the heater is actually full of water. Lighting it without water in it could damage it. Once I know the heater is full of water, I open up the panel and then use a lighter to light the pilot light. Once the pilot light is lit and I can confirm that the burner is working and working safely, I close everything back up and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much gonna wrap things up for setting up my Coleman, Utah pop-up camper. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.